After a month of use of this gun, I'm finally ready to make this video. Welcome to my comprehensive review of my Elite Force MP5A4, OEM by VFC. Before this video starts, I want to say that I ordered the gun from my sponsors, Fox Airsoft, but they just gave me a discount. Now being that this is my first MP5, well technically my second, but my first good MP5, and it's such a unique platform, I have a lot of things to touch up on. Before we get into anything, I want to remind you all that I do have merch. Check the link in the description to pick up some. Hoodies are one of my favorites, and they're really soft. Alright, now that the shameless plug is out of the way, let's get into the unboxing. The box itself is what you'd expect from an HK licensed rifle. All black, looks super cool. Flipping it open, you have the paperwork, some propaganda, and a very detailed manual. Elite Force always does a good job with their manuals. Up next, we get a 200 round metal high cap magazine, which fits and feeds fine in this gun. Lastly, we get the gun wrapped in the turtle killing plastic bag. Yeah, I stole that quote from US Airsoft, but who cares. Note that the gun does not come with a claw rail mount. I'll link mine in the description if you guys want it. Alright, now we can get up close and personal. Right off the bat, this thing is quite heavy and the polymer feels excellent. Up front, you get the standard MP5 flash hider with the 14mm counterclockwise threads already on the flash hider. No need to remove the flash hider. Thank you, Elite Force. You also get this small sling mount next to the front sight. The front handguard is removable by pushing out this pin, pulling back, and then pulling down. And it's as easy to put it back on. Back sight on first, push up, and then slide forward to lock in place. Then put the pin back in. This is removable in case you want to add an aftermarket handguard or front wire of the gun, which is pretty cool. Now the thing that everybody is wondering about, the charging handle. Yes, you can HK slap it, and it sounds awesome. The main purpose is to access the hop-up, which is an AK style slider hop-up. Back is for more hop, forward is for less hop. Super easy, nothing to complain about. Moving back, we have the adjustable rear sight for different size holes to aim with. Moving down, you have the ambidextrous fire controls, safe, semi, and full auto. No mechanical burst fire with this one, sadly. The mag release has two options. You can use the right hand release, which is pretty hard to use, or just use the paddle, which is ambidextrous. The lower is all one piece. Pistol grip, trigger guard, all part of the lower. So you can't change it, obviously, in case you were wondering. Moving back, we have the stock, the super sexy stock. It can be completely removed by pushing out the pin and sliding it off. This exposes the wires and the MOSFET. No ETU, just a MOSFET. All this does is help protect your trigger contacts. If you look inside the back of the gun, you will see this little plastic piece. This is where you get to your quick change spring. It's not super efficient, but it's pretty easy. I'll show you guys. First, remove the stock. Then remove the receiver body pin. Be sure you don't confuse the two. The short pin is the receiver, the long one is for the stock. Then slide the upper forward, but not all the way. It just makes it easier to put it back together. Then get a screwdriver and unscrew the screw connected to the gearbox first. And then there's one more that's connected to the body. After both screws are removed, pull the divider out. Now you just need the right size Allen key to swap springs. Just turn it counterclockwise until the teeth line up with the notch and pull it out. Put it back in, repeat the process. See, not too hard. Now for the stock, I recommend removing the butt plate to get to the battery compartment. Just makes it easier to put the battery in. For the chrono test, I'm using 0.20 gram BBs and an 11.1 LiPo. After the chrono test, we can conclude that this gun is not very CQB legal out of the box. But you do have that quick change spring. The rate of fire isn't anything special, but it is what it is. I would like to note two cons. First, the motor gets really hot when you're using the stock spring, so be mindful of that. Just after one game, I had to let it sit to cool down. But when I put a lower FPS spring in it, I didn't experience that issue. Weird. The second con is the mag compatibility. The plastic Elite Force midcaps do not lock in the mag well. They feed. Sometimes. I've had good experience with the Elite Force high caps and the metal mid caps, which I don't know the brand. Overall, this gun is outstanding. Besides the mag issue and the overheating motor, this gun performs phenomenally. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and please be sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram to be up to date on new videos. Now enjoy some gameplay. <laughs>
I just got all the poles. <laughs> Oh wait. I think you're dry firing. And I got you too. Ah. Oh. I'm so sorry. You're good, I'm you're good. You. <laughs> Did you? Did you? I didn't feel anything. Cool. Thank you. Oh, well. <laughs> Good job, good job. Gun hit, gun hit. Go ahead. Ah, oh, good shot. I'm out. <laughs> Good shot. Hey, 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 hey. Dead man. Blue team win.